<laughs> the Battle of Brandy Station was fought on June 9, 1863 and was the largest cavalry battle in American history. This was the first battle of the Gettysburg Campaign and was the first time Union cavalry was able to stand up to Confederate cavalry in battle. By the day's end, over 1,400 men would be killed, wounded, captured, or missing, many being hacked to death in close quarters combat with sabers and lances. Over the years, the battle has gotten the reputation for being extremely haunted, and today we're going to look at the Battle of Brandy Station and the ghosts that have since remained on the battlefield. After the victory at Chancellorsville, the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia was looking to carry the war into Pennsylvania. In early June, the Confederate Army was making its way north and some of the army had camped in nearby Culpeper. The cavalry under the command of General Jeb Stuart was stationed a few miles north near Brandy Station to watch for a potential surprise attack. Stuart ordered a grand review and drill of his cavalry and what some newspaper reporters called a feeding of the ego. Meanwhile, the Union Army had a large cavalry force of its own nearby. Union General Joseph Hooker anticipated that this large gathering of Confederate cavalry meant that they were going to attempt to raid his supplies, cut communications, and possibly march north. So he rushed to intercept them in a surprise attack. The Union cavalry under the command of Major General Alfred Pleasanton was split into two wings to try and catch Stuart's men in a pincer movement that would hopefully crush the Southern cavalry and stop any raids further north. However, Pleasanton incorrectly assumed he had the larger force and he didn't take into account the poor communication between his men, especially splitting them into two separate wings. At 4.30 a.m. on June 9th, Union General Buford and his wing attacked the Confederate pickets nearby and it seemed as though the Confederate Army had been caught off guard. Jones' division heard the gunfire and he quickly deployed his men in a defensive position with many of the men riding into battle bareback. The Confederate cavalry led a counterattack that stopped Buford temporarily, but then he started making progress once again in defeating the Confederate line. Unfortunately for Buford, his men had pushed close to Stuart's horse artillery, and the battery aimed their cannons towards Buford's men at very close range. This delayed Buford's men and allowed the Confederates time to form a proper battle line to repel any future attacks. The cannons began taking a heavy toll on the Union horses, and one unit decided to do something about it. The 6th Pennsylvania Cavalry, also known as Rush's Lancers, attempted to charge the Confederate guns near the St. James Church, and many veterans of the battle called it the most glorious charge they had ever seen. The attack ended in disaster, and many horsemen were cut down by canister shot, and they were forced to limp back to the Union camp. The 6th suffered far more casualties than any other unit during the battle. As Buford was attempting to turn the flank, Gregg's cavalry showed up and the Confederates pulled their lines back. Gregg's command had gotten lost, but Buford needed the reinforcements to help push the Confederate lines further back. The Confederate cavalry still held a very strong position and their proper lines of communication meant that they could quickly deliver news and orders all over the battlefield. As the Confederates fell back, the Union started advancing when they were suddenly surprised by a mass of Confederate cavalry charging over Fleetwood Hill. The Confederates started launching small offenses of their own to try and check the Union advance, and it worked. The Union command was confused, and most of the commanders attacked randomly, and there was no coordination whatsoever. The Confederates had started pushing the Union cavalry back, and a final charge by Union cavalry gained nothing but more casualties. After 10 hours of fighting, General Pleasanton called for a withdrawal of the field and of Union forces. As the Union cavalry fled from the field, they were chased by regiments of Confederate cavalry and soldiers, and Buford was harassed all the way back across the river where he had attacked the pickets earlier that morning. The Battle of Brandy Station had come to an end. At the end of fighting, about 1,400 men lay dead or wounded, and the Confederates held their positions. The battle had an interesting effect on the Union cavalry though. They had stood up to the Confederate cavalry who at this point seemed invincible and they saw it as a moral victory. This confidence will play a crucial role in the Battle of Gettysburg less than a month later. Over the years, people visiting the battlefield have reported seeing phantom horsemen riding over Fleetwood Hill and across the fields as if they're reenacting some grand charge from the battle. St. James Church no longer exists, but the ruins there are said to be very haunted, and many people walking around there late at night have reported eerie feelings, seeing phantom soldiers, and even hearing gunfire and smelling smoke. 
During my investigations of the battlefield, this has always been the most active area by far. It's also one of my favorite areas to investigate. During my first trip there a few years back, I stopped at Fleetwood Hill and used a spirit box to see what I could get. And I got a handful of interesting voice across the spirit box, nothing insane, but the most interesting experience was when I saw three figures below the hill walking away from where I was. They were dressed in blue and looked like reenactors, but there were none on the field at the time. I always jump at the chance to investigate any battlefield I can, and Brandy Station is definitely one of my favorites to investigate.